It's good to be back. It's good to be back up here just sharing what I believe the Lord's given me a message that's um, for the church and for the believers. A lot of people want to preach, but they don't have a message. And my message is always going to be the believer's identity in Christ, who they are in Christ, by what Christ did for them at the finished work of the cross. And that's grace. And grace is not something that's passive or tolerance or just uh, something that's weak, but it's something very strong and very powerful. So it's just, I was thinking about like this week, what am I want to share on about this? And then it was only just yesterday where I got the title, He Paid for It All. When we look at the cross and what Christ accomplished on the cross, we tend to focus on certain subjects like healing, forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, which is all true and so important. But there is so much more that Christ accomplished on the cross for us. Mm. And I want to share on the, and I could, I could, I could write and talk for hours on this subject, but I won't because I know I'll upset Ian. Because <laughs> 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 he constantly reminds me there's only two. <laughs> if if you're watching out there, it's just it's a little bit of an in joke, but it's okay. One day I might share it with you, but. I'm, the more I've been walking in the grace walk, as I like to call it, I'm beginning to realize more and more and more what I have and what you have already in Christ. And I want to start sharing this. And, um, and I believe this could really help us and set us free from the merry-go-round, the cycle of defeat that we keep going on. We've all been through it. We all go through it. And we often think, when is this merry-go-round going to stop? When does things get better? You know, when are we going to have that breakthrough? When are we going to have the victory? And then we, then I stop and as the more I start walking in grace, not just preaching about it, not just teaching about it, but walking. What's the point of teaching and preaching grace if you're not going to walk in it? When I took that step to the other side, and when I mean by the other side of being religious, trying to, you know, trying to please God through religious um, law keeping, so to speak. And when I say law keeping, I'm not, not necessarily talking about the Old Testament law, but, but just laws and, and, and um, traditions and rules I've imposed upon myself to try to please God, which really what's doing is bringing me nothing but bondage and defeat. Mm. And we weren't called to meet, to live that life in the New Testament Christian. What? So when I started going to that other side, of walking in grace and start walking out, I believed I've tapped into something that's so powerful, that something is so holy, that is something so righteous, and I never want to go back again. So I want to share part of that today. I could, like I said, I could go on for ages and ages and ages, but we don't have time but maybe you do it in a part series or something. I don't know. But he paid for it all. Christians are always seeking God for things that they already have or they already possess in Christ, whether it be healing, holiness, more faith. Everything they need to live a victorious life they already have it if they are a believer in Christ. Yep. 
Father, we just thank you for your word this morning. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus in your throne room of grace, and I ask you and I thank you for your anointing to preach this word this morning. Lord, I want to preach this word with truth and accuracy, and I believe this is from you for our church family and for the people listening out there. Yes. Father, I thank you for your grace for this and right now. And Lord, as I speak these words, Lord, I understand that I'm going to be received a strict judgment, Lord, and I take that on board, and I consider this a privilege to share. But Lord, it's such a joy to share your word, and I thank you that you're a good, good father who loves us so much. And with loving kindness, you've drawn us unto yourself. So I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for this responsibility. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just impact the lives here and the people out there who are listening and watching. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. As I continue in my walk, I've come to the conclusion that we should be asking God the Father for a fresh revelation of what we already possess. We come to God so many times asking for things that we already have where I believe we should kind of stop that in a sense. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray to God and ask him for things because that's, that's not what I'm saying. But as Christians, we should turn around and say, I ask the Father in heaven for a fresh revelation of what we already have and what we possess in Christ for what he did on the cross. And believe it or not, this is not done by religious law keeping, by what Jesus has accomplished on the cross. Too many times the Christians are tr mixed covenants. Christians are trying to live a victorious Christian lifestyle by law keeping, religious law keeping. You can't mix the two covenants. The old covenant was fulfilled. It wasn't abolished. He fulfilled it. Should we negate the Old Testament? Absolutely not. Because in that, in the law, we learn God's holy, righteous judgment. We learn God's holy, righteous character. But there was a problem with that. We learn how holy God was, but it could never make us holy. That's why we needed the perfect sacrifice. We needed someone to come on our behalf to be that, to fulfill that for us. See, we don't have a covenant with God. He has a covenant with his son. Mm. Right. And when we're baptized into Christ, we come to Christ and we're born again and we believe him as our savior, we're the beneficiaries mm. of that covenant. That's good. Christ did it all. And we receive the blessing. So good. That is so true. And I struggle with that. I used to struggle with it so much, but the more I, I can't escape the word. The word is truth. Okay, and that's what it says. If we continue to try, um, sorry, if we continue to try to live victoriously by law keeping, we'll continue to fall back into bondage into never-ending merry-go-round cycle of defeat. And we weren't destined or created to live that way, but rather to live victoriously through Christ. That is the power of grace. The grace walk. Resting in the power of the finished work of the cross, for he paid for it all. There are so many things that we now possess in Christ. So let's look at some of the things that we now have. Now, this, this is just such a short list, but there is so much, so, so much. And I'm only going to talk about that much. First one, the power of sin has been dealt with. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to me with Romans 6. Chapter 6, verse 14. 
we are going to jump around a little bit in the Bible, but so we should. We should. It's, it's, we should be. We should be going through the Word all the time. Verse fourteen. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. See, Acts 13 verse 39 says that God has dealt with all of our iniquities. Not only did Christ pay for your sins, but he dealt with the sin problem. He dealt with the sin problem, the power of sin. See, why would Christ go to the great expense of the cross for us to become under bondage of sin still? Amen. It just doesn't make sense. Uh-huh. That's why, that's why we not only did he forgive us and cleanse us from all iniquity according to Acts 13:39. an act that the blood of bull and goats could never, ever do. It also dealt with the power of sin, the sin issue in life. And that's something that that we tend to forget because we, we just focus on, we become so sin conscious all the time, dealing with our sin, dealing with our sin, rather than being righteous consciousness. We need to be righteous, conscious yes. church. Okay? If we start thinking about sin consciousness all the time, then that's where we're going to be staying all the time. Amen. If we start being righteous consciousness, we start living yes. that way. Very and it comes down to simply believing. Now, that sounds like too simplistic, really. But that's what we were all required to do, was to believe that he did it. And that's hard to let go, especially when you're brought up in a church or church traditions where you've got to take, keep all these, do these 10 steps or five steps to having victory over sin and things like that. Now, I'm not saying there's no wisdom in those things, so please don't think I'm being legalistic there. But what I am saying is, is that we weren't called to be to follow all these little steps. We were told to believe that he did it. Okay. All right. Romans 5.20. And it's, and I, I love this. And it says, Moreover, the law entered that offense might abound but where sin abound grace abounded much more so here we see it's through the grace that god triumphed over sin the sin issue has been dealt with but do you know that if you don't know that then you're going to continue to struggle in that area So it's not just the penalty of our sin that has been paid, but the power of sin that has now been dealt with. He broke the power of sin over our lives. Why? Because we're not under law. Because we are under grace. And grace, as you know, I preach grace all the time, an identity in Christ. Grace does not give you the license to sin. Grace enables you to walk in victory over sin. That is it. It is, and it, grace also enables us to walk in holiness and in obedience. It doesn't motivate us. It empowers us to do so. Okay? And we're told we are to believe that. Number two, 
another thing that a lot of Christians are really, and I, and I admire this, and I, and I think it's great that Christians have started talking about walking in holiness again. And I think that's something that's lacking a lot. Amen. It's yeah. lacking a lot. And so they pray to God, Lord, Lord, just help me to walk in holiness. Help me to walk in holiness, Lord. Lord. You know, and that's beautiful and, and, and sincere, and that's wonderful. But in Second Peter 1, Chapter 3, through the cross, we have already have everything we need to be holy. Don't believe me? Let's go to Second Peter chapter one verse three. We possess that power and that ability to live holy now. Okay. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these that you may be partakers of the divine nature, the divine nature, that's Christ living in us, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I love it when it goes in verse chapter 3 where it says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Some version says pertain to holiness. We have that now. You ever have those people in your life that just rub you up the wrong way? You find it difficult to love? No. No? Oh, no. Well, yeah. well you guys. Normally in politics, it could be. But we, we all have people in our life that we just, just say, God, give me the grace to love that person. <laughs> give me that grace to, 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 be, to think holy towards them and stuff like that. Church. You need to stop praying that because you already have that ability in Christ now. You have that. That was part of the part of the the the, 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 the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ that He paid for us to have and to walk in right now. And it's you know, and your emotions get up there, and it's like sandpaper. That you know, remember, we, you know, in Bible college, we call it sandpaper ministry. Yeah, you know, some people have got a, like a more of a rougher grade sandpaper than others, you know, and they leave a bit of a mark. But you know, and then you people sitting there praying, God, Jesus, I just want to love this person, you know. But but the truth is, we already have in Christ that ability to walk in holiness, love, and forgiveness towards that particular person already. But it's whether you choose to or not, that's the thing. And that's, you know, and that's sometimes that's a tough pill to swallow, but the word is true. The word doesn't lie. Yeah. We already have it. You know, I, I, I had a victory in an area of my life early this year. And um, it was just after all this cancer things sort of flared up. And, and it really set me free. And I was over the area of finances. Someone did something wrong by me and raked up a debt that was a sizable amount of debt to me. And, um, and I turned around and I said to the Lord, and I made this commitment to the Lord last year, probably even further back. Um, I said, Lord, I forgive the debt. I'll pay for it. Now, I, now, I shouldn't have had to, but I chose to. Mm -hmm. Because I got to the point where 
there's no point of sitting me up here and Simon or whoever else giving a preaching grace and, and there's no point preaching it and teaching it and, and rather not walk in it. Because yeah. I was getting to the point where I was getting really desperate for a change in my life to walk in power and in victory. So I started paying off this debt and I whinged and I moaned for a while and I, you know, you know, and I complained to the bank and I complained, you know, every now and again. And then, and then I had to have an attitude adjustment and, and you know, and, and just say, Lord, I'm sorry, I need to, I need to change this. I need to change my attitude. And I did that and I had the ability paid off, kept my commitment to the Lord. And when that happened, I even, <laughs> and I'm not saying this to make myself spiritual or sound good. I'm just telling you because this was a big thing for me. I even gave, blessed that person with money to help them with medical bills. Mm-hmm. And some of you might think, oh, well, that's just unwise, that's stupid, that's silly, but but for me, it broke. And ever since then, I've started experience walking in the power of his grace, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of salvation. And ever since then, I'm, and I'm not perfect in it, but I'm still determined to walk that way. When I release that debt, and I, Matthew chapter 18 is a very, very impacting verse of scripture for me. You know, the parable of the unforgiving servant that always had a profound impact upon my life. And it's not, and one day I'm going to stand before the Lord and the Lord's going to say, did you forgive him of the debt? I forgave him. Of, I forgave you of your debt. Mm. And I just, you know, and I want to be able to stand before the Lord and just go, you know, I, I never, I never got it right all the time. But whatever time I've got left, I just want to finish well. Mm-hmm. And that's it, you know. That's where, I, that's, and that's where I am in my life. Whatever time I've got left on this earth, till He comes back, I'm just determined to finish well. And I think that's something we should all strive to do. Again, we see that the emphasis is not placed upon ourselves, but what Christ does through us. And it's no longer we who live, but Christ who lives through us. Galatians 2.20. I use that verse of scripture every time I'm up here, but I believe it's a key revelation for people they need to get hold of it's no longer that you who lives anymore it's christ who lives through you and enables you to live in holiness and in love and in righteousness with other people it's christ in you the hope of glory It's not us. We can't do it. Do you think, I heard a preacher say this, and it's so true. Do you think that you're going to get to heaven one day and, you know, and give Jesus a high five and say, hey, we did it? Jesus would be like, excuse me? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can you run that by me one more time? (laughs) What are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? (laughs) That's but the thing, but see, but see, that's the thing. We can't do it. We can't do it. But He can through us. That's grace. That's power. That's the grace walk. We've got to start walking a different walk. That's why I believe so strongly that you can't change people. Spouses, stop trying to change your spouse. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's like you can't, 
you can't. It's like Simon says this, you know, it took me a long time to realize this, but I'm actually not the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. You know, and it's, but, it, but it's, but it's true. We yeah. say we, we have humor in that, but we do do that. We try to change people. We want to yeah, try to yeah. change people for the better, but we can't. Yeah, that's right. We were never meant to. That's true. You can't tell people what to do. I'm not talking about a godly advice and wisdom and things like that. Okay, so don't don't get the wrong idea. But it's the Holy Spirit, it's Christ living in you that changes you. Come on. Yeah. So good. He transforms you from glory to glory to the image of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Not someone else, not the person sitting next to you. Stop telling people what they're allowed to eat and drink and, and, you know, and what they should be doing or what they should not be doing. You can't do that. That's between you and your doctor, between you and the Lord. You know, that's just no one else. Stop imposing laws on people. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that to sound like a, a, as an act of rebellion, but the, but the reality is, is that we we do this with a lot of sincerity. We try to, you should be doing this, and you should be doing that, you should be praying more, you should be reading the Bible more, you should be doing all this stuff. All right? Now, are those things good? Yes. They are. But when you start imposing laws upon people and you start bringing them under bondage, they start when they fail to uh, to try and upkeep those mm -hmm. those rules yeah. they flip back in the bondage all the time yeah. Yeah. that's not the christian life mm -hmm. what was intended. it's not what it was intended yeah. in the old testament you did good you got good you did bad you got bad yeah. in the new testament Christ fulfilled it on our behalf. So Preach when so when God looks at us, he sees Christ. Come on. Very good. He doesn't look upon us with anger and judgment anymore because that is being paid for on the cross. Amen. We might do things that not please him, but he's not angry with us anymore because his anger and wrath, and that was all poured out, on the cross and Jesus paid for it. Yeah. Christians are living in so much defeat. I was one of them. Decades and decades of constant torment and fear. And I was going out of my mind. Really losing the plot. Because I thought I lost my salvation because of the sins that I've committed through the trauma and the grief that I've suffered. You know, and they caused me to act in, in ways that were just so unholy and unbecoming. And it wasn't until I started realizing this and the power of walking in the grace walk that God says, I paid for it all. And I learned it was easy for me to forgive. It didn't come naturally. Because I'm still got this mind concept that I've got to do, 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 rather than just, just be, be, be. We're human beings. We be. Not human doings. Okay. So, coming up into, I'm going to look at some, um, some verses of scriptures to tie this off and finish it up. But let's look at some scriptures that cement that it's all of Christ and none of us. All we do is believe it by faith. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven verses of scriptures, and we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day. Okay, so, so first, 2 Corinthians 2.14. And this is where we're just going to jump around. Now, I 
want to cement the fact here and I want to get this into our spirits that it's not what we do for Christ but what Christ has done in us. Amen. That's the New Testament living. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. In who? Christ. Is it through our own rules and our own good efforts and best intentions? No, but in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6. A lot of us know this one, and it's just... Verses 3 to 6, and I love this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And if we keep reading, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Is that something that we do, or is that something that he's done for us? Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 9. Let's keep going. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he had loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. Mm -hmm. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Not us. He's done it, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, we need to get that into our heads, not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Wow. Wow. It's what he's done in us. We can't do it. We can't take we can't take the credit for it. Philippians 1 16. We've read this a few times and was mentioned this morning. And I love this verse of scripture. I hung on to this so much. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Who completes the good work? You do? If it was left up to us, mate, we'd screw it up, something chronic. Mm -hmm. We'd totally destroy it. But he started it. He's going to finish it. So, And we've been told to be confident of that. So what he started in you, he will finish in you. Be confident of that. That is a great promise. And it takes the pressure off us. Philippians 4.13, we know this one. I can do all things through. I can do all things by making rules yeah. for myself, yeah. being religious, being being better, getting up at 5 a.m. every morning and praying and stuff like that. No. I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. Not you, but through Christ. Romans 8.37 
Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through. Yeah. Through who? Him. Him. Who's him? Jesus Christ. Who loved us. Yeah. We are already conquerors through Jesus Christ because he defeated the grave. He broke the power of sin and death. He's enabled us to live holy. So therefore, we in Christ, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Not through what we do and our best intentions, but through him. And to finish it off, this scripture often gets misquoted. And we're going to go back to Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. And it only gets, we only quote half of this verse. We don't read it in its entire context, but it says this. Therefore, my beloved, as you have already, sorry, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation your own salvation not somebody else's your own with fear and trembling now a lot of people just stop there yeah it's not where it finishes, not where it finishes. for it is who yeah. god yeah. who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure amen it doesn't say here that we're here to work on our salvation or we're not called to work at our salvation. Right. We are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean? For me, this is what, it, for me personally, this is what it means. When I started walking with the Lord back in 1988, Okay, I've been exposed to grace teaching. I've been exposed to reformation teaching, hyper faith teaching, the prosperity gospel. I have been exposed to um, even false religion to Jehovah's Witnesses. I was such a passion. I was a zealot for it. I was just close to being baptized. I thank God God got me out of it. And, look, and, and looking back at it, I am grateful about going through that. Oh, my God, that messes with your head, with all the different theologies. So I had to work out my own salvation. And I had to straighten out. And I'm convinced more than anything in the world, there's no other gospel but the gospel of grace. Yeah. You see that in Galatians? We read that. And if we've been told to preach another gospel, then let them be accursed. But... We are called to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. For it is God that works in you to both his good will and for his good pleasure. Amen. It's he's the one that does it. Yep. He's the one that does it because he loves us so much. He wants us to come close to him. He said, hey, you know what? You never got it right all the time, but, but you, you, we're working it out. Yeah. Let me work in you. Yeah. Let my will be perfect in you. Perfect. Oh, isn't that awesome? Um, yeah. Because it takes the emphasis off us yeah. and the emphasis is back on Christ always. We can't take the glory for it. The grace-filled life or walk is a life that empowers us to reign and have dominion over. That was God's original plan right back in the beginning. And it's still the same plan to reign. To reign and have dominion. But that was lost through the fall. But now, through the great redemption, through Christ, we can reign and have dominion once again because he paid for it all. Amen. 
I struggled with that because it sounded like too prosperity teaching for me. But I can't escape the word. We were called to, to reign and to have dominion yeah. over this earth. <coughs> to have dominion over <coughs> sin, to reign over sin, because we can, yeah. because we're not under the law, because we are under grace, because the power and the curse of sin has been broken once and for all. If you're in Christ Jesus and you believe that he paid the price and the penalty of your sin, then you have that victory right now. And you have that ability in Christ, not of your own, not of your best intentions, but you have that ability by his grace and power to live victoriously. And that is only just a short snippet of something that is that big of what Christ has done on the cross. And next time if I get the share, I'll, I'll put more down and put more down. That's my passion. That's my heart. I care about the hearts of people. I want them to know who they truly are in Christ because mm -hmm. I struggled with it for so long. Mm -hmm. And now I want people to know that no longer do you have to live in a cycle of defeat because I did for decades and it was tr painful and now feel like I've stepped down on through the other side and I said, Lord, I want to bring as many people with me with this message as, as, as possibly can. That's good. Father, we just thank you for this time this morning and we thank you for your word. We thank you for the beautiful time of fellowship. We thank you for a beautiful communion message. So, Father, I just pray for people out here today who don't know you, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, that you, through your Holy Spirit, Lord, you will draw them unto you. Lord, I pray that these people who are listening out here will get who don't know you, Lord, will hear the words that were spoken and say, I, w I want that. I'm sick of this cycle. I want to get off this merry-go-round. Or they've been brought up in a religious environment where of all this rule-keeping and and stuff like that, which has done nothing but brought them back under bondage. It's like a, a thermometer that goes up and down, up and down, up and down all the time. Father, I pray for them. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to them about the truth of the gospel, and that's the power of grace. So, Father, we just thank you for this time together. And, Father, I thank you for the time of fellowship we're about to have. And, Lord, we just want to give you all the praise and the glory because it's not what we do, it's what you've done. And we believe that. And we walk by faith and we accept that by faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.